Hey guys, welcome back to Tony's How To's. In this video, we'll be showing you Wix Website Builder, the ultimate guide. So, we have a lot of topics here to cover, so let's start with how to create a Wix website. So you might be wondering, how do you actually start creating your websites in Wix? So we all know that Wix offers a free plan wherein you'll be able to publish and create your sites for free. So especially with the platform itself and the technology that you're, that you're using here, the capabilities of designing your website is actually not limited. So you could position some elements in a way which is I'll be showing you later on how to do that. Now in this case, what we need to do here is first is we need to have a Wix account. So first things first, go to Wix.com, create your account. And once you've created your account, you should be redirected to this page here or to the next page that I'll be showing you. But if you're redirected to the page here, what we need to do next is we need to start creating our website. So in this case, click on the option that says create new site at the top right of your screen. And it's going to load up another tab wherein it's going to say free website builder. Now, in this case, it's going to say, bring your ideas to life with AI. So if you're not aware yet, Wix has actually implemented a way for you to create your website through the use of AI. But for now, we want to go ahead and use the basic setup. In this case, we want to first familiar familiarize yourself on how Wix actually works. So let's go to go to basic setup. Now from here, it's going to load up your web page here again, or tab, and it's going to say what kind of website are you creating. So maybe we want to say we are creating a portfolio website here. In this case, just click on the appropriate option. And it's really important here that you basically state what type of website here. So especially if you're building a store or a specific kind of website like for booking and whatnot make sure that you indicate here because the available features to you will differ depending on how you answer the following questions so for now just get click on the x uh, next button here which is next and what would you like to call your website so i want to say this is going to be a sample website for me so i just want to say this my name here and i want to add a sample to it just click on next now, once you've added a name for your website, we want to go ahead and choose what do you want to add to your website. So maybe by default, we want to add a portfolio here. Like what I said before, depending on how you answer the questions before, the following options to you will be available and pre-selected for you. Now, in this case, I want to keep portfolio here, Instagram feed. And if you want to add other sections here, like for example, music, forms, online programs, events, bookings, chat, and a lot more. So if you want to add those, make sure to check on it. But for now, I just want to use the basic features that we have right now. So let's click on next. And once you click on it, you should you should be rejected to another page here. And it says start setting up your website. So in this case, manage your app, site settings, analytics, communications, and more. Now, in this case, if you click on go to dashboard here, you will only be redirected to your dashboard and you won't be able to choose a template yet, but you have to access a specific link for it on that. But I'll be showing you where that link leads to or what link you need to click to add a template. But since we're already on this page here, we want to go ahead and click on the option that says begin with a template. Since we want to basically use the following templates or viewable templates that they already have here. Now, there are going to be a lot of templates that you could use here. So depending on how you answered before, they will be able to show you the different templates that you might want to try. Now, in this case, they have latest work, illustrator here, photographer, artist, photographer again, illustrator, and a lot more. So depending on what type of portfolio you want here, you want to choose the appropriate one. So maybe we want to choose the option here for artists. So let's just click on it, edit, and it's going to automatically add that add that as our template and it's going to load up the website editor here now under the website editor here you should be able to edit the website itself but this might take a few seconds or a few minutes to load up since it's going to apply that specific template into your website so let's just wait for it now once the new tab or the editor actually loads up it's going to say let ai write your site content so you need to add a few details on it like for example if you want to use their ai capabilities here you could go ahead and let them add the site content for you but for now we want to utilize the manual way here so that we'll be familiar with how things actually work here 
Now, first things first is we first have to familiarize ourselves what are the things that we could use here in Wix. So I'll be showing you the basics here. So obviously there's going to be a lot of things that you could do here in uh, Wix, but I'll be showing you the essentials. So first things first is at the left side here, we have add elements, add section, pages and menu, site design, apps, business, media, and CMS. Now the most important settings here are going to be add elements, which in this case, you'll be able to add photos or buttons or different elements. Uh, depend, it depends on how you want to add it. Like for example, text, you want to add a specific text. That's how you add it with text, images, and whatnot. Now, sections are going to be segments on the page itself. Now, think of the text as elements, and sections is the container of those elements. Now, pages and menu is from the name itself. It's going to be the pages. So, for example, you have if you have like a specific page for a specific project, well, this is where you'll be able to manage them. Now, here we have site design. Now, site design is a great way for you to basically customize your website so to make things a lot more unified. In this case, first things first, we want to go ahead and go to site design first. So site design, you should be able to change the site theme on it. Like for example, the colors, the color team, text team, page background, page transitions, if you want to add those. Like for example, if you want to add change the text theme here, you'll be able to choose a specific theme for like headings or the paragraph style here as well. Now, in this case, we also have the color team wherein you'll be able to customize the colors that is within the app or the team that we have right now. So currently, these are the accent colors. So if you want to change those, just click on it. And from there, you, could, you should be able to change or add a color, specific color here if you want to as well. Now, if you want to view the advanced settings here, wherein you'll be able to ch uh, pick whatever the primary background here, secondary background, line dividers, titles, subtitles, and a lot more. Now, once you've done editing all of the uh, team or the site design here, we want to move on to the section for sections. Now, sections is a way for you to add different sections itself. Like what I told you before, uh, think of sections as containers of elements. Now, by default, it's going to give you different sections that you might want to use. Like for example, that if you want to welcome someone, you might want to use the welcome section here. So just press and hold on it and drag it into your web page here. It's going to be automatically added. As you can see right now, it's going to be automatically added. Now, the good thing about this one is when you click on the specific element here, you should be able to change the text itself or even customize the settings that is available on that specific element there, like fonts, font size. And with uh, it's kind of similar to Word, so you could go ahead and bold the text itself, it it italic, or use the underline functionalities here, as well as the changing color of this specific text here. Now, also have the effects here which in this case, text effects, drop shadows, and a lot more glow. And we also have the character line spacing here. So if you want to adjust the character line spacing, the vertical text, if you want to enable that, so it's going to be vertical text, as you can see right now. You also have the option for SEO and accessibility as well. So if you want to adjust those. Now, a good thing about the uh, sections or elements that we add here is we could customize them. Like for example, this since this is just a container box, you could go ahead and just press and hold on one point here and you could extend it and adjust it so that it's going to look good, as you can see right now. Now, since we've added another section here, by the way, if you want to explore other sections that is available here, you what you need to do here is just click on whatever con type of uh, sections that you want to add like about as gallery here or even team so in this case subscribe services business info there's a lot of things that you could use as a section here so you could go ahead and just explore that but for now if you want to further customize different sections here or customize your website we could go to elements now other elements is where you'll be able to add text buttons decoratives galleries menus anchors and a lot more so basically this is where these small things that you could add into your website this is where you'll be able to use them now for example in this welcome section here maybe we want to add a image so go ahead and choose the image option here and from here we have the upload and image and import and we want to go ahead and click on upload image now once you click on it it's going to pop up another ui here wherein you'll be able to start uploading your image 
Now in this case, we want to click on upload from computer and it's going to load up th this up and choose your image, click on open. And once you've done that, it's going to start uploading that. And once it's actually uploaded, we could go ahead and start add this into our website. So let's just wait for it. Now in this case, we want to click, make sure that it's actually selected and just click on add to page. And it's going to be added now into our uh, website. As you can see, you could go ahead and change a few things here. Like at the corners here, you could just press and hold on it and you could re even resize it. Now, the good thing, like what I said before, the good thing about Wix here is the, the, we are not restricted on how we actually position our elements. As, as you can see, I am able to reposition this image here in whatever way I want. Now in this case, I even want, if I want to position it in this way, you could go ahead and do that. And you could even edit the image itself and change the image here. So I also have the uh, settings here. So if you want to change that, like for example, when image is click, a link opens. If you want to add those or it opens in a pop-up, it can be magnified and a lot more. So what's the image? So in here, it's going to explain what's the image. This is going to be the file name itself. So does this image have a tooltip? So if you want to add a tooltip, you could go ahead and click on adding tooltip. Tool now from here, what are the other things that we could do here? Like the signs, if you want to change the design for this specific image, add frames or discover other frames here if you want. Like for example, we want to add this one or this frame here, you go ahead and do that as well. Now, if you want to crop your image, just click on this one. If you want to add filters, click on filters. If you want to add animation to it, you could go ahead and do that as well. Now, if you want to add link, just click on link here and you should be able to basically add a link. So which page? So choose this one. So if you have different pages already added in your uh, web page here, you could choose that. I also have web address here, sections or anchor. But if you want to cancel that, just click on cancel here. Now from here, what are the other things that we could do here as well? So like what I told you before, you could basically edit it in a way that is that you want. Now in this case, most of the time people are going to be in their phone. So if you click on the switch to mobile option here at the top left, you should be able to start editing your website in a mobile format. As you can see right now, this is the mobile format. This is what your web, web page going to look like whenever they access it via their mobile phones which is a great way for you to really customize and ensure that your website is going to look cool and good on whatever device that they want to access this one now also we have the page here at the top left now by default we have home here we have project one project two since we chosen a portfolio team here but if you want to manage your pages click just click on manage pages and from here you should be able to see other pages as you can see right now now, once we switch to the desktop mode here or the desktop version of our website, you should be able to see other settings that you could change. Like for example, if you want to add another page, just click on add page here and you just need to basically choose what page you want to add. So in this case, if you want to use a back page, just click on back page here, but you could use whatever template that we have right now. Now, also, if you click on that specific page here, like for example, you want to go ahead and go to the project page here. So once you click on it, it's going to redirect you to that specific page. So if you want to edit it, like for example, if you click on the tree dot icon here, we have settings, SEO basics, and a lot more. So if you want to delete them as well, just click on delete here. Now also, if you want to reposition, reposition them, what you need to do is just press and hold on the dotted icon here, and you should be able to change where it's actually going to be located. Now, yeah, so if you want to now publish your website, what we need to do is just click on the option there that says save first. And once you've saved that, you want to choose a specific domain here. So if you want to customize domain, you have to pay for it to connect your own customized domain here. But for now, we want to use the free one, which is Wix.com. Just click on save and continue. And once you've done that, what we need to do is wait for the save to complete. And once it's actually done, just click on done. And from here, just click on publish at the top right. And it's going to publish our website. It's going to say, congratulations, your site is now published. Just click on view site here. And from here, you should be able to see your website as you can see right now. Wix owner app tutorial. So how do you use the Wix mobile app here? In this case, how do we use the Wix owner app tutorial here? Well, in this case, it's actually pretty easy to use. So if you're familiar with the desktop version, it's quite similar to that, but some settings might be in different positions and there are a few customizations that you do here. So first things first is we need to install the actual app. So you could go ahead and open up Google Play Store and search for Wix owner. So in this case, you go ahead and click on install. And once you fully install that, you could go ahead and click on the open button here. 
Now, in this case, the first thing you need to do is you need to log in. Now, they have an option here to log in via your Google account, which is the method that I choose. Now, in this case, depending on the Google app or, for example, the uh, account that is logged in on your Google Play Store, they will get that email address and use that as a means of logging in into your Wix account. Now, in this case, what are the important settings and section here that you need to remember whenever you're accessing the actual app? So first is we have the home page here. Now, from the name itself, you have the option to view the home page. Like, for example, you should be able to see the analytics, upcoming sessions, contacts for your website, your payments that is available on your website. So if you want to add payments or just a few settings on your website, the app itself can help you with that. So for example, let's go and click on connect a payment method. So from here, you just need to follow the on-screen steps for you to add your or basically add accepting or start accepting payments into your account, like uh, adding PayPal, Stripe, or manual payments here. Now, in this case, there are going to be different widgets that you can access here, like price codes, invoice, if you want to create your invoice here, and proposals and form activity and whatnot. But at the very bottom, you have the option to manage your widgets. So in this case, let's go and click on it. Now, in this case, you have the option to delete widgets here if you want to, like for example, proposals, if you want to delete them, and uh, yeah. So in this case, uh, for example, I want to remove the option for media storage here. As you can see, that this will be removed from my widgets. But if you want to re-add it again, you can go and click on the plus button here and even reposition them in whatever method. Like for example, the first thing you want to see in your um, uh, homepage here is going to be your, let's just say, this is going to be the... Um, push notification section. Let's go ahead and press hold in it and make sure that we actually position it at the very top here. And once you're done, just click on save at the top, right? And when we, whenever we go to our uh, website, as you can see in our homepage, we now have the push notifications at the very top. Now, what are the other things that we could do here in our homepage? Now, at the very top, you also have the option to view your uh, website itself. So if you have multiple websites, you can manage them in here. So in this case, let's go and click on the website name itself. And as you can see, we now have the option to change to a different website if you want to. So for example, I want to go to this website here that I have that is published right now. And from here, it should switch us to that specific website. As you can see, switching uh, complete. Now, in this case, you can change a few things as well here by clicking on the profile icon at the top left, and you should be able to see your actual profile. So and this concludes uh, uh, changing your notifica uh, notification settings, app language, app display, help articles, and if you want to log out, you can go and click on log out here as well. Now, if you want to manage your account settings, you can go and click on the appropriate link here and change your basic info, login info, and even add to step verification just to secure your account and even delete your account if you want to. Now, in this case, at the top right, you have your notifications. So in this case, this is where your notifications uh, will be uh, redirected. Now, if you click on the three dotted icon here, you have the option to view your live site, share URL of your website here, or go to the site and app section. Now, when you go to the site and app section, you have the option to connect a domain if you want to share URLs or even view the actual website. So in this case, you have the option to uh, customize or invite members or even view this one and get your site discovered. So there are going to be a lot of things that you can do here, basically. So if you want to connect your domain, just click on connect domain here and just follow the following steps for you to connect your domain. Now, what are the other steps or other features that we can access here? Now, we also have activity here, which includes all the activity that you have on your website. Now, this is a great section for viewing your activity. So may, uh, in this case, it will actually compile all the activities that you receive on your website in here. Now, if you want to immediately create a specific type of content here, like for example, if you want to create an invoice, you could go and click on the option that says add and it will give you the option to do quick action. So in this case, create invoices, more actions, send a push notification, share mobile announcement, or may even make a video or create a social post or create an email campaign. Now that's how you do those things, which is something really, uh, really cool because you could immediately do things here by clicking on the add button. Now inbox will contain all the images that you have on, or sorry, the messages that you have on your account. So in this case, you can view them by clicking on the actual uh, message. As you can see, we have our message here. And if you want to start managing them, you could go and click on the tree dot icon at the top right. And from here, you could basically mark them as, uh, as red, edit list, or even adjust your settings for your uh, site chat. 
So in this includes these send their email address, save replies, business number settings, notification settings about Wix inbox. Like for example, this under email, you could go and uh, change this by clicking on this one and use a Gmail address if you want to just follow the on-screen steps. Now you can even view the save replies here, which is the automatic replies that you, that you save on your website. Now, if you want to edit them, just click on the uh, the right icon or your pencil icon uh, underneath on it. And from here, you have the save reply name, the message itself. And if you want to delete it, just click on the delete reply option there. Now, in this case, what does the manage option do? Well, the manage section, like what we have on the original website at the left panel, you have the option on your payments, your portfolio, photo albums, getting paid from your website, customer leads, and marketing. So basically, this is like the side panel that you always see whenever you're editing your website. So for example, if you want to adjust your payments, you can go to payments here. And in this case, you can go and click on connect a payment method if you want to. Also have portfolio here if you want to manage that, like fashion, portraits, and whatnot. Also have the photo albums, galleries, if you have any photos that is on your website. Also have analytics, like club marketing, and all of those important things they want to do on your website. So uh, in this case, uh, using the actual website is pretty easy. And if you're like, for example, you're actually pretty um, confused on a specific setting that you're looking for. Well, you could actually use the search function at the top right, as you can see, at the top right, you have the magnifying glass on there. So you could go and click on it. Like for example, I wanna say it is going to be payment. So as you can see, we have the payments uh, setting here available for us if you want to. So yeah, so using the search function here allows you or actually helps you uh, be uh, informed on wh where things are actually at or uh, find a quick uh, setting itself in just in case you, you are not yet that used to the actual mobile app. So use the search function here. It's actually pretty, pretty helpful. So by the way, you could again uh, go, go to your uh, site here. And if you like, for example, if you want to create a new website, you can go and choose the create new option at the very bottom and go through the whole process. So if you're familiar with creating a Wix website, we just need to complete the uh, following options here, like the uh, categories, the name for the website and whatnot. So yeah, so I also have the option to view the trash here. So websites that you've deleted before. So you should be able to recover them in this section here. How to buy Wix premium plan. So you might be wondering, uh, how do you buy a premium plan in Wix? So we don't normally see it here in this page here, but sometimes your user was, would actually see a buy or upgrade plan option here. But in this case, if you don't have that option, it can be kind of confusing to upgrade your plan. Now in this case, what we need to do first is we need to access the website or site that we want to upgrade. So maybe I want to say I have this portfolio website. So let's go and click on select an edit site and we should be able to see the dashboard for that website. Now from here, we need to access our settings. So let's go ahead and get, go to the left panel here, click on settings and under settings, we need to click on manage plan option. Now in this case, let's go and click on it. Now. In the next page, we need to upgrade our plan. So let's go and click on upgrade your site and it should redirect us into the plans that they currently have. Now, in this case, they have different uh, plans that will be available to you. Like for example, we have the website plans, the business and e-commerce plans, the enterprise plans. Now, depending on what you need. So for example, if you're just building a portfolio website, then website plans would be a great thing for you. But if you're running a e-commerce website, like for example, you're selling something online, then you might need to go to business and e-commerce plans. Now, depending on what plan that you get here, you will get a number of features on uh, that specific plan. Like for example, when you go to uh, website plans here, these are going to be the um, benefits that you, you'll be getting here, like custom domain, free SSL certificate, bandwidth, the storage space that you have, and the more or the more costly that you get for that specific plan here. Like for example, there's going to be four types of plan on the website plans here. We have VIP, unlimited combo, and connect domain. Now, in this case, if you get the cheapest one here, you'll be missing the free domain for one year and remove Wix branding, which is uh, great features for you to uh, basically uh, take over or utilize. Now, in this case, uh, you could go ahead and just click on select. But again, I would suggest you to first view the available benefits for that specific plan. Again, identify the correct plan that you need for your website. If you are running a business, make sure to go to business and e-commerce web plans, e-commerce plans here. But if you're just running a personal website or portfolio, website plans here would suffice. 
in this case let's go and select a plan here so maybe i want to get the vip here let's go and click on select now it's going to ask us what type of billing cycle that we want to use so we have yearly monthly and two years now if you get the two years and yearly here you'll be able to save um, as much uh for your plan here like for example we have save 50 percent if you use the yearly here so in this case this is going to be 12.25 for 12 months now if you get the um two years here it's going to be 11.50 for 24 months so it's going to be a big still so maybe i want to say two years is good here and let's go and click on get you to check out now in the checkout page, you'll need to provide all the necessary details for you to make the payment. So that includes your card number, expiration date, your first name, your last name, as well as the CVV of your card. Now they accept a number or various cards here, like for example, MasterCard, Visa, and a lot more. But if you want to use PayPal here, just use PayPal here. And you need to also fill out the invoice details. So that includes your first name, last name, address, CD, postal code, country, phone, and company name. But this is just optional. Now, once you've done that, you can go and click on continue to payment or continue to people for you to proceed with your payment. And once you proceed your payment, you should have now a premium plan for the chosen website that you have. You have to set up Wix email or Wix business email. So what we need to do first here is we need to access our Wix account and our Wix website. So go to Wix.com, log in into your account and open up your website here. Now typically on your manage section or manage page for your Wix website, at the left side, there's going to be some settings that you can actually access. Now in this case, for you to set up your business email or business mail and your Wix website, what you need to do is you need to go to communications and from here look for business email. Now, on their business email, you should be able to see this window here, which in this case, you'll be able to build some type of email address for your business. So in this case, it's going to be like, for example, info at yourdomain.com or support or your name at yourdomain.com. But for you to start using this specific feature here, we first have to basically connect our own domain. So in this case, click on the connect domain here. And from here, you should be able to see the following option. Now, in this case, you could go ahead and just enter a name here. For example, I want to say, I want to say, I want to use this specific domain here. So let's just say that com here, which is a very popular one. And from here, just click on let's go. Now, once you click on let's go, you should be able to start choosing your own domain here. So it's going to give you some options here. So we also have .net here, .info, .online if you want to use that. But in this case, uh, if you uh, want to go ahead and just buy the, the domain for that, you could go ahead and just click on the domain that you want to use. So for example, I want to use this one. This is just an example, but you could use uh, whatever here. But in this case, you first have to uh, basically buy the domain here. So you need at least a one year subscription to start using that domain. But in this case, once you've connected your domain, once you access the communication and business email section in here, you should be able to start editing or setting up your business email. Now, another way for you to access this window here is you could go to your profile at the top right here and clicking on account settings. And under account settings, you should be able to see the same window here. And if you click on business email, you should be able to see the same window here. How to use Wix forms. So may, you might be wondering, how do you start using Wix forms here? Well, in this case, for us to start using Wix for, oh, forms, we first have to create our website. In this case, let's go ahead and go to Wix.com, log in into your account, and let's go ahead and click on the create new site button at the top right of your screen. Now, from here, what we need to do is we need to choose the appropriate options here. So I want to set this up without AI. And from here, you need to choose what type of website you want to actually build. But in this case, I'm going to skip this section here, but you could choose whatever you want here. So in this case, it's going to start preparing our dashboard. Now, on the dashboard section, what you need to do is you need to enter the name of your site. So basically, fill out all the desired details. So maybe I want to say it is going to be a sample website and i want to add my name here let's go ahead and click on continue and from here we want to actually uh indicate our site code so maybe i want to say i want to promote my business here click on continue and from here it's going to ask us what are the wix apps that we want to add In this case since we want to add wix forms we want to click on forms here and click on continue now from here it's going to say set up your site here stop start with template or get a custom built site so i want to go ahead and click on start with template here and it should redirect me to this section here 
Now, in this case, what we need to do is we need to choose the appropriate ones here. So maybe I want to use a basic one here. So maybe I want to use this one. So let's go and click on the edit option here. And it should apply that template into our website. Now, once it's actually uh, uh, applied into our website or once the template is applied, what we need to do next is we need to start adding our details or our form. In this case, it's going to say let AI write your site content. So I want to exit this one. So for now, let's just click on the uh, site here. So in this case, uh, let's go to the left side here. So let's go ahead and uh, maybe I want to click on add elements here. So in the add elements, there's going to be a few things that you give you here, like for example, text, images, button, strip. But the most important section here is going to be the contact and form section. Now, as you can see, there's going to be a default forms that you could use like contact us, get in touch, contact information, and a lot more, which is something really cool if you want to easily apply it into your website. So in this case, we want to choose our form here. So in this case, I want to use this for a first a form here. So just to give you an example, let's go ahead and drag it into our Wix uh, editor here. So in this case, as you can see, by default, it has the first last name, uh, email, and write a message option here, and the submit button as well. Now, the great thing about Wix forms here is the actual form is actually pre-configured. So you don't have to do much here. Uh, but if you want to change a few things like adding new fields, uh, adding anti-spam, you could actually do that as well. So in this case, let's go and click on the form itself. And we want to first go to form settings. Now, form settings, you should be able to uh, go to uh, the main section here, which in this case, you should be able to see the view submissions table. See, though, so the submission table, it actually contains all the submissions that actually arrive or people actually fill out whenever they visit your website. So, for example, if someone submitted a form, this is where you'll be able to see it. Now, you should be able to see the submission time, the first name, last name, email, and write a message section of that specific uh, form. Now, if you want to also add uh, fields on it, you can just click on manage fields here, and you should be able to add like IDs, create date, date upload date, owner and a lot more now in this case if you want to change the view for it you can just click on new view here and basically uh change it to another one so for example i want to say a view two i'm just press on enter and from here you should be able to uh basically add or basically uh, add a, a new view for your uh form submission for contact us here so in this case you want to click on delete so let's just go back to our previous uh, section here so also you have the option to import items or export this to your csv if you want to as well so in this case let's go exit this one now from here when we, once we go to our uh, settings here you should be able to uh, change a few things like for example what is the name of this form like for example if you want to name this to uh, contact us only you could go ahead and do that as well but i'm going to retain this as contact us too but if you want to so um, maybe I want to add a uh, contact as, and from here, we want to add it. Now from here, you also have the email notifications option here. So if you want to add notifications, whenever someone submits your form here, you should be able to add that. So you also have the submission table if you want to view it. So form submissions limit. So if you uh, want to submit, uh, set a limit for the uh, deadline or submission limit, you can add those. So also have the auto form info here. So which info is filled automatically if you want to. I also have the subscriber double opt in. So send subscribers verification emails if they really want to uh, be a subscriber for your uh, account or your form here. Also have the submit message option here. So whenever visit, uh, a visitor submits a form, you should be able to show specific messages. Like for example, show success message. Like for example, thanks for submitting. So set time or always here. Also have the payments here. If you want to receive payments via this form here, you have conditions. If you want to add rules, like for so based on visitors' answers. So you also have the contacts here. Save submissions to contacts if you want to. You have automations. So save time with automations if you want to uh, basically automate some of the processes they have. You have email marketing and even support here if you want to. Now, if you want to add a new field here, you should be able to click on add new field. And from here, you should be able to add a key capture, email, phone, multi-line address, add, uh, birthday, company, position, terms, checkbox here. So, for example, I want to add a section for phone. So, let's go click on phone here. As you can see, phone will now be automatically added. Now, in this case, whenever I click on phone, as, as you can see, I can even move it around within the form itself. So, let's go back into the add new field section. 
and you can change this to basic fields or advanced fields if you want to so some of the fields here can, uh, can be used but you need to have the business premium for you to start using it now we also have anti-spam here which in this case you should be able to add recapture if you want to as well so in this case let's go and exit this one now if you want to add like for example edit your elements you should be, you should be able to go to uh, elements here if you want to uh, change the layout itself so for example if you want to add title padding here as you can see right now even change the alignment if you want to center uh, most of the text I'll make it on the specific uh, side here have the placeholder padding as well and what the cut uh, layout call option here which is one column or two columns so you have the space between rows so you have those customizations you also have the sign here if you want to change the color of the overall look of your form so maybe if you want to make it in this black and white format use the orange uh, format here you go go ahead and do that as well uh, in this case I want to or maybe choose ch change a few things here as well so I want to uh, maybe go to the sign here if you want to further customize your design you can change the input uh, fields here just a bit buttons if you want to change the overall look for it you can even change the form background itself if you want to like corners if you want to uh, maybe add pixels right for example i want to add 10 pixels on it so in this case you have the radius for it so as you can see it's going to be automatically uh added for us now in this case uh you could go ahead and go back in here and when we actually click on this one you also have the option to add animations if you want to like bounce in whenever it actually pops up and uh, yeah so the thing here with uh, fixed forms is you can also customize the elements that is within inside uh, for example if you want to edit your fill, uh, fill here just click on it click on edit field and you can change the text type here you can make it password number email url phone number but i want to keep this to text and you also have the field uh, title here so if you want to change this to, uh, to another uh, field title you can go ahead and do that as well oh, you also have the show initial text so by default it has none but if you want to add placeholders on it you can go ahead and do that so for example i'm going to add test and it should uh, show you test in here but i'm going to choose not here we also have the field uh, type here if you want to make it required or read only if you want to we also have the set character limit so it, by default it's going to be 100 but if you want to remove that you could go ahead and just disable this one I also have the error uh, message format here you have tooltip or inline so by default it's going to be tooltip but if you want to change the inline you can go ahead and do that as well now in this case once you've actually um edited all the things that you want to edit here let's go and click on publish at the top right here to see how it's how it's going to actually look like click on done and from here we want to click on the cancel option now from here let's go ahead and view our site and from here, once you view a site here, what we need to do is we, we need to fill out the details. So just to give you an example, I'm going to enter my details here and I want to uh, maybe add my uh, sample, a sample email here. This is just a sample that we'll be uh, using. So I'll just uh, click on something, I have the me right message here. So I'm going to add test phone number. I'm going to leave this at is and click on submit. Now it's going to uh, submit that and it's going to say thanks for submitting. Now, once we actually go back into our Wix editor here, click on the form itself, go to a form settings and go to the main section, click on view submission table. You should be able to see the submissions table here, which also includes the details that we just recently added on the website itself. As you can see, this is how we capture them. We also have the phone section here, newly added since we added a new uh, uh, section here, which is phone. How to add a service list to Wix website. In this case, how do we add a service list? Well, what we need to do first here is we need to actually add a few sections. So in this case, let's go ahead and scroll down a bit here. And I want to actually add a new section just underneath the, uh, this section here. Let's go and click on add section. Let's add a blank section here. Now, since we now have a blank section, we are now ready to add our service. So let's go ahead and click on the add elements option at the top left here. And from here, what we need to do is we need to look for the bookings option. Now from here, let's go ahead and click on the add to site option. And from here, it's going to add Wix bookings. So let's just wait for it to actually uh, full, uh, load up. But once it's actually loaded up, let's go and click on the plus button again. And you want to go to bookings again. And from here, you could choose the service list option here. So you could choose whatever format you want. So for example, I'm going to actually use a section here. So let's just say uh, this, uh, this one. So this one. Now, also, you might want to first check out your website. As you can see, it's going to be automatically added into your website. 
So in this case, you can basically remove this one if you want to and replace it with another one. So one to delete Rick's bookings. So in this case, you need to uh, actually delete that if you want to click on OK. And let's just wait for it to be removed and re-add it again. So we want to redirect us back into the home page. Let's go and choose side pages and home page again. And let's go ahead and re-add it in here. So in this case, again, plus button here, want to bookings and want to choose this one. Drag it into your website and that should be automatically added as you can see right now. Now from here, we want to start editing our services. So what we need to do is just click on manage services. And from here, you could go in and start adding your services. So in this case, uh, do whatever you want here. So first you need to choose what service. So maybe a single session, a virtual consultation, price estimate, info session, or whatnot. So for example, maybe I want to say it is going to be a virtual consultation. Let's go and choose this one. And from here, we should be able to see the service detail. So in this case, go ahead and add whatever detail you need here. So in this case, uh, you could go and fill out the uh, price for it, the location, the staff that will be available for the actual uh, service. And when, uh, if you want to add images, book in preference, you could go do, do that as well, as you can see right now. So in this case, go ahead and click on save once you're done. And in this case, we first need to add our price. So this, this is just an example. Go ahead and click on save. From here, click on save anyways. And in this case, this should actually add our service. As you can see, we now have a service list here. Now, in this case, if you want to add another one, just click on add new service and that should add your service. So let me actually go back in here and click on the save button. It should actually give you the actual list. So it's no longer going to give you or show you placeholders. It should actually show you the actual service list that we just added. Again, if you want to change a few things, just click on manage services. And if you want to change the actual widget, you can go to services, even manage a few things there. Like for example, your layout, displays, the text, and even design if you want to. How to add payment gateway. So how do you accept payments in your Wix website? In this case, how do we add our payment gateway here? Well, the first thing you need to do here is you need to access your editor. So in this case, either the, in the setup or homepage here, click on edit site at the top right. And from here, what we need to do is we need to search an app that we could install for us to add a payment gateway. So what we need to do is we need to choose the option that says plus or add element here. And what we need to do is we need to add an app. So you could go ahead and click on the search at the top right of the add element section. And from here, we just need to type in the following, which is going to be PayPal. Just press on enter. Now it should search for different apps that you could use for your uh, payment. In this case, we'll be using the PayPal button here. Let's go ahead and click on open. Now, what we need to do is we need to install this one. So in this case, let's just wait for it to load up. And what we need to do is we just need to click on add to site here. And from here, let's go ahead and click on agree and add. And it should now be added into our website. As you can see, the PayPal button has now been added in to our website. It might take some time to load up, but once it's actually loaded up, you could go ahead and reposition them in whatever location you want to. Now, in this case, maybe I want to position them in the bottom section here. Now, in this case, you can make this a lot bigger or longer if you want to. And yeah, so in this case, if you want to edit the actual widget, you could go and click on the settings option here. And you could just basically customize the different elements here. Like for example, the same template here. So if you want to basically use, choose the buy now or the donate or subscription uh, button here, you can go and choose that. But for now, let's go and choose the donate button as an example. And we now need to go to settings. In this case, all we need to do is we need to connect our payment account. So in this case, you could go and click on this one. And from here, you just need to add your PayPal account email. Now, if you don't have one, you could go and create via the link that they provide here. Now, if you have like Stripe, uh, Stripe account, you can even link them in here. And if you want to accept offline payments, so give buyers an option to pay you in some other way, you can go ahead and enable that as well. Now, in this case, uh, if you want to edit the payment notifications, you can go ahead and do that. So for example, uh, send payment notifications to the following uh, uh, email if you want to. Like for example, you have a separate email for notifications whenever you make sales, you can go ahead and do that as well. Also have the autoresponder email, which in this case, whenever someone actually completes a successful uh, uh, payment, they will be able to, or this app will be able to actually um, send an automatic email thanking them with their purchase. So in this case, you go and click on the customized autoresponder email here, and you should be able to edit the actual email that will be sent out. Now, now in this case, 
although the app is actually pretty simple, they actually offer a lot of features here as well. So as you can see, uh, you can go ahead and start adding your text, adding dividers, images, or even text if you want to. So you could go ahead and click on them and just add the text or change the text, even change the font for it, the line height and whatnot. So once you're done, you can go ahead and click on save at the top right to save your changes and that should be now added. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and go back. Now, we also have the redirect after payment. So, for example, if someone actually completes the payment here, they will be they you have the option to actually redirect them to a specific website. Like, for example, if you want to show them a uh, website or a special website, you could go ahead and add the website here as well for them to actually view. You also have the Google Tag Manager here if you want to, but this is a pro feature. So, if you want to access it, you could go ahead and basically uh, upgrade your plan here. But in this case, we could actually use this for free. Now we also have the product here, which in this case by default is going to be donate since we chosen donate here. Donation name is donation. Uh, you could go ahead and edit whatever here and the donation amount, you could even uh, change that if you want to the dollars or the uh, currency that you could add in here. The uh, default quantity, uh, product options if you want to, like add product options if you want to use that. but. By default, you need to have the starter feature for it to access that. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of things that you could do here. So in this case, uh, you have the design here to choose from and even remove the POWR branding. But then again, you need to have an upgrade plan for you to use that. Also have other apps here that is related to the people button here. How to add domain to Wix for free. In this case, for us to add our domain to Wix for free, what we need to do is we first need to get the address of our website. So typically you go to either setup or home here and just click on the URL that see that you see next to connect domain. In this case, let's go and copy this one. And you might be wondering, why are we not using the connect domain link here? Well, the thing here is for you to utilize this one or to add your own domain, you need to have the payment plan for Wix, which in this case, we don't have that. So I'll be showing you a way to still use your already existing domain for your website. So in this case, I already have a website here named, uh, I have a website or a domain in name cheap here. So in this case, how do we customize this one? So let's go ahead and go to our domain list at the left panel on our dashboard. And from here, we want to go ahead and basically edit our website. So if you see any verified contacts here, go ahead and do that first. Now in this case, I've already verified myself what it looks like. It's not, it's not yet very, uh, reflecting on my account. So let's go and click on the drop down here and click on manage. And from here, what we need to do is we need to scroll down a bit here and look for the redirect domain option. Let's go and click on add redirect. Now from here, the destination URL and source URL needs to be filled. So in this case, at the destination URL, we want to basically uh, paste the link for our website. So we have this website here. So what we need to do is we now need to add the source URL. So in this case, let's go ahead and copy our store here. This is our uh, URL. Let's go and paste it in here. And from here, you could go and just click on the check next to it. Now, same thing, what we need to do is we need to add a redirect again, paste it, but this time you want to add the www dot the following. And from here, we want to again, copy our URL from our website and click on check. Now, once you've done this, you just need to wait for a few hours or a few uh, for a few days for in order for the domain to reflect on your website. So this might not be perfect. You might encounter some issues, but this is how you actually do it. But if you need assistance, you can go and reach out to the platform support team, support team for in order for you to fix any problems that you'll encounter later on. But in this case, that's about it. How to add language in Wix. So how do we actually add? a language in Wix. Well, this one is actually pretty easy. So what we need to do first is we need to access our Wix account here. So go to Wix.com, log in into your account. And from here, what we need to do next is we need to access the website that we want to add our language on. In this case, let's go and click on this website here. Click on select and edit store or shop or site here. And from here, you should be able to see the admin dashboard for your site. Now, in this case, you need to look for the edit site button here. So it's either located in the setup page here or in the home page here. So let's go ahead and click on edit site. And from here, that should actually open up the Wix website editor. Now, in this case, what you need to do here is we need to wait for it to properly load up because we'll be accessing some of the settings for our Wix website. Now, what we need to do next is we need to click on settings at the top left of your screen. And from here, look for the option that says multilingual. 
Now, under multilingual, it's first going to ask you to confirm your site's default language. So I'm going to choose English here and choose a flag for it and just click on confirm uh, language here. And once you've done that, it should load up the multilingual overview section. In this case, you need to add a new language here. For example, I want to add a language here. So let's just choose a something that is right for us. So maybe I want to use Chinese here. Just to give an example, so I'll just choose Chinese here, and we also have to choose the uh, language or the flag for it. As you can see, there are going to be some settings that you could access here, like make site in Chinese visible right away, and we also have the auto translate site contents. Now, if you enable the auto translate site contents here, you don't have to manually translate all of the languages or all the words that you see next on your site. Now, in this case, what you need to do is click on add language here. And from here, it should automatically uh, translate the languages that you have or the words that you have on your website. And whenever you click on edit translations here, you should be able to update certain uh, translations for that word. But since this is actually automatically uh, uh, converted or translated, you won't have to do anything here. But in this case, if you want to do this manually, that's how you do it manually. Now, in this case, once we actually uh, exit this one, what you need to do is just need to click on the save button here. It's going to say refresh page. And from here, just go ahead and refresh your page here. And once you've done that, what we need to do next is we have to ensure that our website is properly set up. In this case, you need to confirm that you ha now have the drop down button that you see here. And once you have it available, make sure to click on save again. And once you click on save, go ahead and just click on the publish now button here to publish your changes. And from here, you should be good. And that's about it. So in this case, if you want to change your language, you can go ahead and click on at the top left here, switch language to a different one. Or in your website, in your actual website, you can go ahead and click on this drop down here to change that specific language. How to add background music to Wix website. So what we need to do first is we need to access our Wix account and our Wix website. So in this case, go to Wix.com, log in into your account, and open up your website here. Now, once you've opened up your website, you should be able to see the manage page here. And what we need to do in our homepage is we need to edit our site. So at the top right, click on the edit site option, and that should actually open up the editor for your website. So in this case, what we need to do next is we need to start adding our elements or in this case, our background music. So how do we do that? So in here, what we need to do is we need to click on the plus button that you see at the top left, which is the add elements button. So once you click on it, search for the video and music section here. Now, once it's chosen that, you should be able to see the following options here. Now, under video section, you have the music uh, section here, which in this case, you have the following options. You have audio player, Wix music, SoundCloud player, Spotify player, and iTunes button. Now, in this case, I would actually start using audio players here, but in this case, audio players is actually quite basic. So you just, uh, you, what you need to do here is upload your music. And when you actually click on the play button, that would actually start playing the music. But the cool thing about here is if, if, uh, if you choose the Wix music here instead of using the audio player here, you have to have more options. Now in this case, maybe I want to use this uh, uh, type of uh, music player here. So just press and hold on it and just drag it into our website. Now once added, what we need to do next is we need to start editing our newly added section here. So in this case, go ahead and click on it and click on the manage your music section. And that should actually load up a pop up here, which in this case, you should be able to start adding your music here. Now, in this case, maybe I want to click on create single here. And from here, we want to add a single name here, single version, artist name, genre, uh, and some descriptions on it. And you can also add a cover for it. Now, in this case, you have the option to uh, add a single download option, currency, and a lot more. But in this case, we just want to first upload our music. So let's just close this one very quickly here. And from here, we want to go to our settings. Now, under settings, what we need to do is we should be able to see this pop up here. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on the start now button here. And that should actually redirect you to the uh, other page or the previous page that we actually visited. Now, in this case, I already added a music here just to give you an idea. But if you want to add your music, just click on add music, click on create single, add a single name here and an artist name. 
Now, once you've done that, it should redirect you to another page, which in this case is going to be the next page that you'll be seeing. Now, in this case, go ahead and click on Add Tracks here and start uploading your music. Now, in this case, this is just a sample music that I have right now. Just wait for it to be downloaded and, or uploaded. And once it's actually uploaded, you should be able to start using it. Now, once it's actually uploaded, you should be able to start previewing your music here. So if you click on the play button, you should be able to basically preview that music in here. So in this case, let's just close this one real quickly here and view our previous website. And from here, you should be able to see the Wix, uh, Wix music pop up again. Now, once you go to my music here, you should be able to choose the music that you have. So currently, I've chosen uploaded this video here or you, this music here. So I've chosen it. As you can see, it is now uh, what is going to be played in here. So again, let's go back into our settings here. What is the cool thing here is when you actually go to the settings here, you, sh you should have the option here that says autoplay when page loads. So meaning when you actually make sure that you click on it or enable the setting here, this music would actually be, uh, be played on the background once this page is fully loaded. Now meaning you will now have a background music for your Wix website. How to add Calendly to Wix website. In this case, how do we add Calendly to the Wix or to our Wix website? So what we need to do first is we need to access our Wix website here. So in this case, you can either go to home or set up here and click on the edit site at the top right. Now, what we need to do next is we now need to go to Calendly. So in this case, you could go and create your schedule or your event here. So in this case, I've already created my own. So let's go ahead and start integrating that into our Wix website. So let's go ahead and click on the event that we get just added here. And from here, choose the option at the left panel here. We have the share button. Go ahead and click on it. And from here, you want to go to, uh, to the section that says add to website. Now you have three options here. We have inline pop-up widget and pop-up text. Now in this case, you could choose whatever option here, but what I like to choose here is going to be the inline embed, which in this case is going to be quite static and it show it's will, it will show only a specific section on your website. Let's go and click on continue. Now, what we need to do is we just need to copy the code itself. So in this case, you can even hide event type details if you want to uh, hide cookie banner, if you want to change the color, background color, text color, button and link color if you want to. So in this case, you can go and click on copy code at the bottom right here. And once you've done that, go back to your editor, click on the plus button at the top left. But for now, you could go ahead and start adding uh, sections if you want to. So uh, in this case, I'm going to delete this specific element here. And from here, let's go and click on the plus or a plus button or add element button. And from here, what we need to do is we need to look for the option that says embed code. Go ahead and select that. From here, click on embed HTML. And you want to paste your code here. Let's go and paste this one. Click on update. And that should actually integrate our website or our, um, our uh, Calendly uh, section or widget in here. So in this case, you could go ahead and uh, make it bigger if you want to. Let's just go ahead and make this a lot bigger here. So yeah, in this case, make it bigger if you want to, if that doesn't actually uh, fit the whole thing here. But once it actually fits, uh, you are good. So if you want to edit a few things like the settings here, you could go and click on settings, even adjust the code itself and add your own. Uh, if you know how to edit this one, like for example, the widget uh, width and height as well. And yeah. So in this case, once you've added all the details or once you've added this one, you should be able to click on save and publish at the top right. And from here on, you should be good. How to add click to call button to Wix website. So how do we add a click to call button on our Wix website? Well, in this case, it's actually pretty easy. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to go to our Wix website here and go to our website editor. And from here, what we need to do is we need to have a space that we want to add our click to call button. Now, if you don't have enough space here, I recommend you to add a new section here. Just click on add section and click on the black section here. But for now, we're good for this one. And from here, we need to access the next website that we'll be using to add a click to call button. Now, in this case, what we need to do is we need to go to this website, which is going to be offside.com. Now, from this website, what we need to do next is we need to uh, log in or create our account. So make sure to create our account or log in as our account. Once you've done that, you go to the top left here, click on widgets. And from here, just type in the following, which is going to be call. In this case, you should be able to see the click to call option here. Let's go and click on it. And from here, what we need to do is we now need to customize our button. 
now in this case there's going to be different layouts that you, you could choose from so you could choose this one which is at the bottom right of your screen we have this up 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 here and already pop up here now in this case maybe i want to use this format here so let's go ahead and choose that and click on continue with the template now from here you need to add your forward number as well as the button here if you want to show the button icon now also you have the call window here if you want to change that like for example the image itself the name the caption here and the message itself so if you want to format the phone number you could also do that as well now if you want to change the position you could change the position to the left floating or in line you can even change the settings here like for pages devices visitors and schedule even change the size itself you want to change the button color the uh, text itself so there's going to be a lot of customizations that you could do here but for now we are good with this one let's go and click on add to website and from here it should redirect you to the uh next page which in this case a verification page but in this case make sure you need to make sure that your uh button here or your widget is actually correct now once you verify that just click on publish at the top right of your screen and from here it's going to ask you to choose a plan that you want to use or uh basically you want to use for your uh, Elsa website here or for this specific widget. In this case, you could actually use it uh, for free. So this is just for testing, testing purposes, which is a great way for you to test it. So in this case, let's go and click on select the free plan here. And from here, let's go and click on the copy code option. Now let's go ahead and go back into our website editor here. Go to the app elements at the top left here. And from here, go to embed code. Go to the embed HTML option here and go ahead and paste your code that you just recently copied. In this case, go ahead and click on update here. So if you don't see the, it updated, I would recommend you to uh, remove the code itself, repaste it, click on update, and that should fix the problem. In this case, you can even resize uh, the actual uh, look of your um, uh, widget here. You can move it around if you want to. So yeah, so in this case, you just need to reposition it and even save or publish it at the top right, and you should be good. How to add Facebook feed to Wix website. So how do we add our Facebook feed on our Wix website? Well, in this case, it's actually pretty easy. So what we need to do first is we need to go to Wix.com, log in into our account, and once logged in, what we need to do next is we need to access our editor here. Now, in our editor, we need to add a space to add our Facebook feed. In this case, go to the bottom section here and you should see the add section button appearing on your screen. So let's go and click on it. Now from here, let's go and click on the black section option at the top left. And as you can see, we now have a space. Now for us to add our Facebook feed here, we will be using a widget. So in this case, go to elfsite.com. And from here, it is recommended that you create your account or log in into your account. In this case, once you've created your account or logged in, what we need to do is we need to go to our widgets here. And in widgets, what we need to do is we just need to type in the following, which is going to be Facebook. From here, just go ahead and press on it and you should be able to see a Facebook feed widget here. Let's go ahead and click on it. Now from here, what we need to do next is we need to choose the template that we want to use. So there's going to be different templates to choose from. So in this example, we'll be using this template here. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and click on continue with this template. And from here, what we need to do is we just need to connect our Facebook. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to click on connect to Facebook. And it's going to request us to actually connect our account. So you need to switch to our account here for, for you to continue. Let's go ahead and click on continue. And from here, let's go ahead and click on continue. Now, in this case, it's going to access our Facebook page here. And as you can see, our Facebook page is now in here. In this case, go ahead and choose the Facebook page that is available on your Facebook account. So let's go ahead and choose this one. And from here, what we need to do next is we need to click on the Add to Website for free. But if you want to change the layout itself, you could go ahead and do that. Like for example, changing the header, the menu, the post itself, photos, albums, videos, and whatnot. Now, if you want to click on the More option, you also have the option to add custom CSS. So for now, let's go and click on Add to Website for free. And it should redirect you to the actual editor itself, so make sure it's actually correct. But for now, let's go and click on Publish at the top right here. And from here, we need to choose the free plan here. So the great thing about website here is they offer a free plan for testing purposes. So in this case, let's go and click on the free plan. Now, it should show you this embed code here. Let's go and click on copy code. Let's go back into our Wix website. Click on the add elements at the top left here and go to embed code. And from here, choose embed HTML. Now from here, go ahead and paste your code here. Click on update. And if you see this error here, it is recommended that you delete the whole thing uh, you see here and paste it again. Click on update to make your changes. Now from here, let's go ahead and resize our look here. So in this case, uh, you should be able to resize your current uh, look for your widget here. But yeah, in this case, that's about it. 
how to add job board in Wix website. So in this case, what we need to do first is we need to go to our website editor. So go to Wix.com, log in into your account and open up your uh, web page or your website here and go to your website editor. In this case, once you've done that, what we need to do next is we need to start adding our widget for us to add our job board. So in this case, we'll be using the following website, which is going to be Elfsite. In this case, go to Elfsite.com, create your account or log in into your account. And once you've created your account or logged in, we need to go to widgets here. Let's go ahead and click on widgets. And from here, we want to go to search. Now from here, just type in the following, which is going to be a job board. And from here, you should be you should be able to see this widget here. Let's go ahead and click on it. And from here, what we need to do is we need to create our widget. So in this case, there's going to be a different uh, type of widget so we could uh, uh, get here. We have uh, this design here. So in this case, just choose the appropriate design I want to use. So maybe I want to use the uh, ID Corp here. Let's go ahead and do that. Click on continue with template. And from here, you could go ahead and just customizing it. Now in this case, you could add your own job. So for example, I want to add a job here for uh, software developer. So in this case, uh, I want to also add a different details here. So maybe I want to say this for IT. And you can just basically add all the these requirement here required here, like location, salary, type of uh, type of contract, apply link, description. If you want to add like a cover, a logo, you could go ahead and do that. Even add skills if you require any specific skills here. And you also have the option to show this job. So for now, let's go ahead and click on the option here. It's done at the top right to add that job. And from here, let's go ahead and click on add to website for free. Now it should redirect you to the option here that says uh edit your uh, uh um widget again so in this case let's go ahead and do whatever here so you can change the layout itself if you want to have it in list and grid or in masonry so we want to keep this in list we also have the job card here so if you want to show the salary company the department as well you can change the appearance like change the accent colors if you want to make it black green or blue you can also have these settings here if you want to add like custom js if you want to in the language itself so for now, we are good with this one. So let's go ahead and click on publish at the top right here. And we now need to choose our plan. Now, the great thing about Elfsight here is you can choose or basically use their platform for free. So you don't have to pay for anything. Let's go and choose this free plan here. And from here, you should be able to see the embed code. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on copy code here. And let's go back into our Wix website. Now from here, we need to click on the add elements here. And from here, we need to look for a specific section here, which is going to be embed code. And from here, we need to do is we need to click on the embed HTML. So let's go and click on the plus button here. And we want to uh, basically paste our, um, our, our code here. So, so sometimes it should show you this error here. So what I like to do is I want to remove this one. Click on anywhere here. Click on it again. Click on the enter code option again or settings here. And paste it again. It should uh, basically apply uh, those uh, changes. As you can see right now, it's not working properly. Now from here, you can just basically reposition your um, widget here in whatever way you want. As you can see, we have this specific section just for our job board. In this case, whenever they click on the learn more here, you should they should be able to see the application link itself for the job board or for that specific job. And that's about it how to add LinkedIn feed to Wix website. So how do you add your LinkedIn feed on your Wix website? Well, adding your feed is actually pretty easy. So what we need to do first is we need to access our website editor here. So go to your Wix website or your account here and access the website editor. In this case, I want to add a section here. Let's go and click on add section. And from here, we want to add a blank section. Now, once you've done that, what we need to do next is we need to go to a specific website for us to add our LinkedIn feed. In this case, we'll be using Elfsite. So go to elfsite.com, create your account, or log in into your account. Now, once you've created your account or once you've logged in into your account, you need to go to the widget section. Now, go ahead and click on it. Now, from here, what we need to do is we just need to type in LinkedIn. LinkedIn. So from here, you should be able to see LinkedIn feed. So let's go ahead and click on it. From here, what we need to do next is we need to choose the uh, type of uh, look for our LinkedIn feed. So for example, maybe I want to add a LinkedIn feed in this uh, format here. So this format here. 
In this case, let's go and click on continue with this template. And from here, what we need to do is we need to add our URLs. Now, in this case, there are going to be some examples that you could actually visit here. So this is just an example. So in this case, this is going to be the LinkedIn profile for Microsoft. So obviously, you need to copy your uh, link for your uh, company. But in this example, we'll be using the following examples here. In this case, let's go and paste our link and click on apply. And from here, we want to also maybe add a personal page example here. So let's go ahead and copy this uh, link here and just click on apply as well. In this case, there are going to be a, a different uh, URLs that you could do here. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on add to website for free here. And once you've done that, you should be able to actually uh, see what's going to look like. So as you can see, these are different posts that from this specific links here. Now here, what we need to do is we need to further customize it. If you want to change the layout here, for example, you can change the grid. So you have masonry, list, slider, you can even change the post itself. You want to change the post style. So you have the feed or classic look here. You also have the appearance here if you want to change the color, if you want it in dark mode, as you can see right now. You even have the uh, customization elements here, like background, post, pop up, and also the settings here if you want to add custom JS. Now, in this case, you can just proceed with all the changes you want, but for now, let's go and click on publish at the top right. Now, from here, we need to choose our plan, but the great thing about Offsite here is you could actually use their platform for free. So, you could uh, try it for free. So, let's go ahead and click on select. Now, from here, what we need to do next is we need to click on the copy code option here. Let's go ahead and go back and to our Wix editor here. And from here, what we need to do is we need to click on the add elements option. And from here, you need to go to embed code. And from here, what we need to do is we need to click on embed HTML. Now, from here, let's go ahead and paste the code that we just recently copied. And from here, we want to click on update. Now, by the way, if you see this error here, just wait for a bit or just repaste your code here. That should fix it, the issue itself. Now, from here, as you can see, we just basically resize our uh, widget here. And as you can see, we now have our LinkedIn feed on our Wix website. How to add news articles to Wix website. In this case, for us to add news articles to our Wix website, what we need to do here is we need to actually use or utilize an app for this one. So in this case, let's go ahead and go to our Wix admin page here, which in this case is Wix.com. I'm in my dashboard here. Let's go and click on edit site at the top right. Now, once you click on it, you should be able to see your editor. Now, from your editor at the top right, go ahead and click on search. And from here, just type in news. Now, you should be able to see different options here that, that says apps for your site. We have the in news and easy content. Now, in this case, by default, the Wix uh, or news uh, options is not by default available on Wix. But then again, there are apps for you to install for you in order for you to do that. So, for example, I'm going to use any news here. Let's go and click on open. And from here, let's go ahead and click on the add to site option. From here, let's go and click on agree and add. Now, it should start adding any news here and you should be able to see an option here that says latest news. Now, you just need to create your own section here if you want. So, for example, I have actually have empty space here that I want to use. So, in this case, I can resize it out as much as I want, make it a lot longer if I want to by clicking on the settings here and change a few things. Like, for example, if I want to change the settings for your title, the keywords and recommendations, and even number of store uh, stories and even news uh source so for example i want to add like four like for example three or four stories will be good so yeah so in this case you could go and choose the number of stories that you want to include in here but then again if you want to fully utilize all the features that you see here you need to have an upgraded plan which in this case if you're just going to use your free plan here uh you won't you will only be able to use the um uh, uh, the simple options here, as you can see, number of stories and news source would be uh, different depending on the app or current plan you have. So in this case, you need to get around two two point ninety nine dollars for you to get the upgrade plan here. But in this case, once you upgrade your plan, you should be able to change a few things like news source. Uh, you could choose Microsoft Bing news API or number of stories here. You can update that and whatnot. But in this case, that's about it. How to add podcasts to Wix website. 
So in this case, how do we add a podcast to our Wix website? So the first thing we need to do here is we need to access our website editor. So go to Wix.com, log in into your account, and access your website editor here. Now from here, we need to first add a section. So go to the uh, bottom section here, click on add section, and we want to click on the blank section at the top left. Now from here, we need to access a specific website, which is going to be elfsite.com. Now in elfsite.com, make sure to create your account or log in into your account. Now, once you've created your account or logged in, we need to click on the widgets option here. And as you can see, there's going to be different widgets that you could actually use on the platform itself. So in this case, we'll be searching for podcast. So just type in podcast and from here, just press on enter. Now you should be able to see three uh, types of um, widgets that you could use. You have podcast player, audio player, or radio player. In this case, we want to choose podcast player here. Now, what we need to do next is we need to choose or basically choose what type of format you want to add on your specific podcast here. So for example, we have this format here. We have the different uh, audios at the right side here and the player at the bottom here. We also have this format here, which is in this case is more on the mobile format. We also have this one at the bottom left here. So maybe I want to use this format here. Let's go click on the continue with this template. Now from here, we need to do next is we need to actually paste our feed link here. So in this case, go ahead and paste the link for your podcast in this section here. And you could also add a cover image if you want to. So just to give an example, I'm going to upload a photo here as a cover. So maybe I want to use this one. Let's go and click on open. And if you want to change the buttons here, you could go ahead and do that. Like RS URL, Apple Podcast URL, Spotify URL here if you have those, and even Stitcher URL. So if you have different URLs for different platforms, you could basically just paste it in here. Now, also, you have the layout option here. You can either choose embed or floating here. Yeah, you even have the player here if you want to, like, for example, remove controls, add controls on it, even change the size if you want to. But for now, we are good. Let's go and click on add to website for free. And it should redirect you to uh, the verification uh, page here, which is going to be the editor here, the main editor. So in this, uh, in this case, go ahead and confirm if all the details are correct here. And just click on publish at the top right once done. Now, in this case, the great thing about outside is you could use their platform for free here. So let's go ahead and select uh, this uh, free option or plan here. And we want to click on the copy code option here. In this case, let's go ahead and go back into our Wix editor. Click on the add elements at the top left. And from here, we need to go to the option that says embed code. Now, from here, we need to do next is we need to choose the embed HTML and paste your code that we just recently got. Now, in this case, sometimes it will have this error here. So I would suggest you to erase your whole code here and repaste it again or just wait for a bit. So in this case, I want to actually remove it again. And from here, I want to paste it again, paste, click on update. And that should actually fix the issues that you will encounter here. In this case, you could even resize your overall look here. As you can see, I'll be able to resize itself. And uh, yeah, so in this case, uh, that's how you add your podcast to your Wix website how to add pop-up form in Wix website. In this case, how do we add a pop-up form in our Wix website? Well, in this case, for us to add a pop-up form, what we need to do is we need to use a third-party application or a website here. So in this case, before we do that, we need to go to our editor. So let's go and click on home here, click on edit site at the top right, and that should open up our editor. Now, once it's actually loading up, let's go ahead and go to the website that we're talking about, which is going to be offsite.com. Now, from here, choose the widgets at the top section. And from here, just type in the following, which is going to be pop up. Now, you should be able to see pop up here. Let's go ahead and click on it. And from here, we want to start designing our pop up. In this case, since we want to use a form here, let's go ahead and choose the closest one for a form. Now, for example, we have the offer pop up here. Let's go ahead and choose this one. Click on continue with this template. Now, from here, we could go ahead and change a few things, like for example, changing the background color, the image, the spacing if you want to, the headings, the text, spacing, and form. So if you want to add another element, you can go and click on add element here and choose whatever option here, like links, headings, or text, or whatnot. Now, in this case, we want to click on cancel. Now, in this case, you can even move things around, like for example, the image, you could do, uh, move it up if you want to. If not, uh, you could go and do that. Now, if you want to edit your form, you can click on three dot here, click on edit. And from here, you can change what fields are going to be needed here, like your name, your email, and yeah. So in this case, you could also edit the submit button if you want to, email notification, spam protection if you want to, if you want to enable the recapture here as well. 
the email notifications and not notify me or notify respondents if you want to but yeah so this case once you've edited all the information here like layouts your settings if you want to you can go and click on add to website for free here and it should redirect you to the uh, choose template option here again we just need to make, need to make sure that your uh, template here is correct let's go and click on publish at the top right and from here let's go and choose the free plan here since we don't want to pay for anything as of now and from here let's go and click on copy code now let's go ahead and go back into our wix website and what we need to do is we need to add a specific section here so just to give you an idea i'm going to actually remove this section here let's just delete this one and from here let's go and click on the plus button at the top left which is the add element option click on embed code from here click on embed html now from here we want to paste the code that we just copied click on update and just wait for a few seconds in order for it to actually apply so you might need to resize your actual uh, section here so let's just resize it so that we'll be able to actually see the whole thing here so in this case once you've done that it should now be a pop-up for your website so in this case uh, let's go ahead and click on publish at the top right here so yeah let's go and click on save and from here you should now be good how to add rss feed to wix website so how do we add our rss feed into our wix website well the first thing you need to do here is you need to access your website editor for wix so in this case go to wix.com log in into your account and open up the editor for your website now from here let's go and add a section here let's go and click on add section here and click on black section so that we'll have some space where we want to add our rss feed in this case, let's go and go back uh, to a specific website here, which is going to be offsite.com. Now, in this case, make sure to create your account or log in into your account. But once you've done that, we are now ready to start adding our widget. Now, in this case, let's go and click on widgets here. Click on it. And from here, just type in the following, which is going to be RSS. Now, in this case, you should be able to see the RS, RSS feed option here. Let's go and click on it. And from here, we want to start editing our feed. Now in this case, you could choose whatever format you have here. There are going to be different designs to choose from. So for this example, we'll be using this specific formatting here. But if you want to choose the, the other ones here, you could go ahead and do that. But for now, we'll be using this one. So in this case, it's going to click on continue with this template. And from here, we need to add our source for our RSS feed. So in this case, I'll be pasting this link here. And from here, we can even add filters if you want to. So if you want to add specific keywords, specific posts, and dates, you can go ahead and do that. But for now, we'll be uh, sticking with this uh, default here. Now from here, you could also uh, change the layout if you want to, even the post itself, if you want to customize that. The appearance itself, if you want to change the color for it as well. But in this case, we are good for now. Let's go and click on add to website for free here to make our changes. And it should redirect you to the actual editor here. Again, make sure to uh, have that the details here are actually correct. And also make sure that your changes are actually reflecting here. But once you've done that, what we need to do is we need to start publishing our uh, feed here. Now, in this case, whenever you click on the publish button here, it should redirect you to this page here, which in this case is going to ask you to choose a plan that you want to use for your outside uh, widget here. In this case, you can use the free one here, which is the current plan that I'm using right now. So in this case, let's go and exit this one. And uh, in this case, it should redirect you to the next page, where in this case, you should be able to see this pop up here. Now, by the way, if you can't see this uh, pop up here, you can just go to your My App section and go to the install button here, and you should be able to see the copy code option in this case let's go and go back into our wix website and from here let's go and click on the add elements option go to embed code go to embed html and from here we need to choose uh, paste our code now in this case once you've done that it should uh reflect it in here so if you see this option or if you see this error here i would recommend you to uh, basically uh change it so in this case make sure you remove that and repaste it again click on update and uh it should actually fix itself in this case, uh, what we need to do is we need to resize our widget here to show the changes. So in this case, you can go ahead and do that. So for now, we're going to stick with three, this one, uh, in three uh, format here. How to add slider to Wix website. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to access our website editor. In this case, go to Wix.com, log in into your account, and access your Wix website editor here. In this case, what we need to do is we need to add a section to add our slider. So in this case, go ahead and scroll down a bit here and look for a section or a divider and see here. Let's go ahead and click on add section. 
Now from here, let's go and add a blank section since we want to add a place for our slider. Now what we need to do next is we need to access a specific website to start adding our slider. So in this case, it's going to be our elf site. In this case, to access their official website, just type in elfsite.com. So you should be able to see it here. And from here, it is recommended that you create your account or log in into your account. In this case, once you've created your account or logged in into your account, go ahead and click on widgets. And under widgets, what we need to do is we just need to type in slider, press on enter, and you should be able to see different sliders that you could add for your website. Now, in this case, we want to use the ordinary slider here. In this case, what we need to do next is we need to choose the format that we want to use for our uh, account or for our widget here. So for example, there's going to be different uh, type of uh, sliders here like video, products, gym, gallery, but we want to choose the store offers here. In this case, once you've uh, chosen your uh, specific format or template here, let's go and click on continue with this template and you could even change the slides. Like for example, if you want to edit this specific slide here, you could go and click on edit. And from here, you could change the image itself. Just click on the uh, replace option here and choose the image they want to use. They could also add links and even change the content itself and how it's currently laid out. What is the title, the text, the buttons, if they actually exist. Now, in this case, you can change or whatever here. You can even change the content overlay, advanced positioning as well. In this case, you also have the option here to uh, basically uh, to view the settings. So for now, to make our changes, just click on done on that specific slide. You can even add other slides if you want to. Just click on add slide here. Now, on the settings, you can change the width, the height, the paginations, arrows, and a lot more. So you also have the advanced here, which includes uh, adding custom CSS and custom JS here if you want to. But for now, let's go and click on add to website for free. And from here, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the changes that we made are actually correct. Now, so for now, let's go and click on publish at the top right here. And the great thing about website is they have a free plan here that we could choose. So let's go and click on select on the free plan and let's go and click on copy code. Now from here, let's go and go back into our website editor. Click on the add elements option here. And from here, click on the embed code and go to embed HTML. Now from here, let's go and paste our code here and that should actually apply itself on our website. So if you see this specific error here, it is recommended that you go back into your uh, code section here, uh, delete that, paste your code again, click on update to uh, apply those changes and that should actually fix the whole look for your uh, widget here. In this case, what you need to do is you just need to resize your section here. As you can see, it might be kind of big. So in this case, I'll go ahead and make sure that it actually fits. But in this case, you could just basically start editing it and make sure it actually fits your website and you should be good. How to add WhatsApp chat to Wix website. So how do we add a WhatsApp chat to our Wix website? Well, what we need to do is we need to actually first access our Wix website and we want to go ahead and go to home or other, either in the setup page here and click on the edit site option. Now, in this case, for us to add a uh, WhatsApp bubble here, what we need to do is we need to actually use a different platform. But the great thing here, this platform is actually for free. So in this case, we'll be using elfsite.com. Now, creating your account here is pretty easy. You just need to click on the sign up or log in at the top right. And you could even use your Google account to sign up or even log in. Now, in this case, we need to search for a widget here. So let's go and click on widgets here. And from here, let's go ahead and just type in WhatsApp press on enter and you should be able to see the whatsapp chat option here let's go ahead and click on it now what we need to do is we now need to actually um uh, start editing our uh, widget here so in this case you could go ahead and choose the type of template that you want to use so we have the general the message field here uh what why team so in this case you can go and choose whatever team you want to use for example i'm going to use the default one here click and continue with this one now from here, we want to start connecting our WhatsApp account. So in this case, you just need to add your WhatsApp number or link. You also need to edit your content. So in this case, the bubble icon, you can change this if you want to, if you want to choose from a library or upload your own if you want to. You can even change the bubble text if you want to. Like you can also change the picture if you want to. So for example, I want to upload a different one. Let's go and click on upload. I want to use this one, click on open. And that should replace the image that will be shown on your WhatsApp as you can see right now. 
Now you have the option to either change the welcome message as well, uh, start the uh, chat method, so start button or send message. Have the button text here, like chat on what, uh, WhatsApp, and you have the show icon in button if you want to. As you can see, the options here actually changes real time whenever you're editing something here. You can even go to settings here, like changing the positions if you want to. Uh, you can even change the open uh, or even update the chat triggers here and the notifications if you want to. You can even change the colors here for the appearance, like the bubble background color, bubble icon color, and a lot more. Now, if you want to see all uh, animations, you can go ahead and disable this one and the animation intervals here. But for now, we are good with what we added here. So in this case, you can go and click on add to website for free and it should start generating our code here. But in this case, it would first redirect you in this section here. So just confirm things here, um, go ahead and add them. But once you've added them, you could go ahead and start closing them. Let's go ahead and click on close here. And from here, as you can see, we now have our WhatsApp chat widget. So in this case, all we need to do is we need to click on the install button and you could go and click on copy code here. From here, go back into your editor here, click on the plus button or add element option. In this case, what we need to do is we need to choose the embed code option here. And from here, you want to choose the embed HTML option. Now this should add a section for your uh, HTML. So in this case, uh, I would recommend you to first add them or basically uh, add a section here dedicated for that. So for example, I wanna add a new section under this one. So I want to use the blank section option here and we want to actually position it. So let's just drag it. Let's go and click on our HTML here. Just scroll down, add this one. In this case, let's go and click on enter code, paste our code that we just copied, click on update. And that should actually start updating our code. So in this case, you could go ahead and put, start repositioning your bubble here. So in this case, if you want to put it in here or why not, so you could go ahead and do that. But for now, once you've done that, go ahead and click on publish at the top right. And that should actually publish your widget or your uh, WhatsApp chat here. And that's about it. How to add YouTube videos in Wix website. In this case, how do we add YouTube videos? Well, in this case, first things first is we need to access our editor. So from our Wix uh, admin page, we want to go to either home or setup and click on the option that says edit site at the top right. Now from here, what we need to do is we now need to start added, adding elements here, which in this case, we'll be adding a video or in this case, a YouTube video specifically. So let's just wait for it to fully load up here. But once that or you've done that, click on add elements. And from here, we want to add a section here for video. So let's just look for video and music. So typically they will be under contact and forms here. Let's go ahead and click on it. And from here, as you can see, we have single video players. So in this case, you could choose whatever option here. So Wix videos, video box, video mask, transparent video. But I wanna choose the single video player here and I wanna choose YouTube. So let's go ahead and place, place it into our website. So I want to actually reposition it somewhere I want so you could go ahead and add a section or blank section here if you want to. So let me just delete this one and add my video. So in this case, let's go ahead and expand it if uh, if you want to. Let's make it a lot bigger. So once in here, what we need to do is we need to actually change the video itself. So by default, it is the video that will be appearing here. Let's go and click on change video. And from here, as you can see, we have the video's web address. So in this case, we want to look for the link that we want to add here or the video that we want to link. So let's go ahead and go to YouTube here, look for a channel or video that we want to basically share. Right click on the actual video and you want to click on the copy video URL option here. So this video can be any anything here. So in this case, you can go ahead and do that. So yeah, in this case, let's go ahead and paste it in here. Let's go ahead and paste it in here. And as you can see, that video should now be updated. Now, just to give you an idea, I'm actually going to go to the actual video just in case you don't know how to uh, copy the actual link here. So let's just play this one. So again, in this video, you can go and right click on it, click on copy video URL, or you could choose the share button here and just click on the copy button or the copy URL or button here. In this case, you could go ahead and just start adding it in your website. Now in this case, if you want to change other things here, you could go ahead and access the settings. Like for example, if you want to change the actual video, uh, the autoplay, if you want to autoplay this one whenever it is actually loads up, you can even play it in the loop whenever it actually finishes playing, it will aut automatically loop if you want to, and even add descriptions if you want to. So if you want to change the layout, 
the uh, the sign itself if you want to add animations whenever it actually appears or some the user actually gets to this specific section you can add uh, animations to it so in this case you could go ahead and click on the publish button or save button at the top right to save your changes and from here on you should be good and that's about it how to add loyalty program to wix website so how do we actually add a loyalty program into our wix website so it's actually pretty easy so let's go ahead and go to wix.com log in into your account and access your store now once in here what we need to do next is we need to access the customer and leads section so the left panel here let's go ahead and click on it and from here you should be able to see the loyalty program option so let's go ahead and click on it again now from here what we need to do next is we need to click on the start now button and from here you should be able to see or start editing your loyalty program now in this case you have the option to add a program name here and the points name here so you could add a custom name here but you could choose the default point name here and you could also add a program name now if you want to change the points icon here you go ahead and choose that for example click on the choice cho change icon here and you should be able to choose and even uh, uh change it to a different one like for example if you want to change this to an egg you could go ahead and do that for further customization but for now i'm going to keep the default information i have here and just click on continue to set up now from here, what we need to do is we need to start editing our loyalty program. Now immediately, you should be able to see the program details here. So that includes your program name, point system, uh, the point name, and the points icon. Now if you want to edit it again, go ahead and click on edit details here, and you should be able to change those again. Now from here, you have the program overview here. So in this case, currently with the default things or default setup that we have right now, we have the purchase product here, which is converted. So for example, if you've set this like for yourself for dollars, you could go ahead and set this to $1 for one point or one cent for one point, depending on how you want to set this up. Now, if you want to manage it, just, just click on the manage button here and you should be able to change a few things. Like for example, purchase a product, you can go ahead and click on edit here and you could change the, how much is actually earned per uh, spent or per purchase. Now, in this case, you could choose whatever points that you want here. We also have the sign up on site, which is by default 50 points. That's the first thing that you get. But if you want to edit that, you could go ahead and choose this and change the points that you want to uh, give. Now, in this case, you have the reward section here as well. So flexible rewards. So in this case, 10 points is equivalent to one peso discount since my store here is actually uh, located in, in the Philippines. But in this case, you should be able to see a specific currency for that. So if you want to edit it, just click on edit here and you'll be able to change how many discount you get for the points that you get. Now, we also have the email notifications or automations here if you want to send customers an email when they earn a reward. Now, you could go ahead and enable this one or even edit the email that you want to uh, give out. But in this case, this is going to be for automations. Now, let's just go back real quickly here and how do we actually fully integrate it? Now, as you can see, we have the add loyalty pages to your site so users can check their points, balance, and rewards. And we also need to install the loyalty widget to let customers redeem their points right at checkout. In this case, you need to first add the loyalty page to your site. So let's go ahead and click on go to editor here and the editor should now pop up. And once it actually loads up, it's going to start adding the Wix loyalty program application. In this case, you just need to wait for it to properly load up. Now, once it's actually added, what we need to do next is we need to visit our loyalty page. So at the top left here, click on the home page and choose loyalty here, and you should be able to see your loyalty page. Now, if you want to edit your settings for your loyalty page, what we need to do is we just need to go to the add app section. And from here, look for the Wix loyalty app. So let's just type in Wix loyalty here. And from here, choose Wix Loyalty Program. And from here, click on the option that says Open. Now, once you click on it, you should be able to click on Manage Program, even customize it if you want to change display, layout, design, text if you want to. In this case, let's go and click on Manage Program. And this would actually redirect you to the Edit or the Manage Program section, which in this case, you'll be able to change a few things. 
Now in this case, for you to launch your program, just click on launch program here. And from here, what we need to do, just click on launch program to confirm. And from here, loyalty program is now live and your customers can now see it on your site. How to add a fair program to Wix website. So what we need to do first here is we need to go to Wix.com, log in into our account, and we need to access our store here. So how do we actually add a fair program? So for us to add that, we need to access a few settings. So in this case, go to the customers and leads section. And from here, you should be able to see a link or a button that says referral program. Now, in this case, once you click on it, you should be able to see this page here. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on the start now button. And from here, it should redirect you to the referral program page. When in this case, you just need to fill out all the necessary details that they need. So that includes the program name here, the free customer reward here. So you could choose either a coupon or no reward here. So maybe I want to say coupon. Now from here, what we need to do next is we need to choose the type of coupon. Now we have the discount, the discount in a peso or the currency that you have or free shipping. Now we should be able to choose discount percentage here and you also have the option to add a reward name. Now you could also apply this to all products or specific product or any specific category if you want to as well as the discount here. So in this case, you could go and indicate how many discounts. So maybe I want to say 10% discount here. And from here, we also have the referred friend reward. So in this case, you could choose your coupon here as well and choose whatever uh, option or whatever uh, details you want to include here as well. Now we also have the emails here, so notify your customers and their friends about the referral program and its rewards. So if you want to encourage customers to refer their friends, you could go ahead and enable this one and notify customers about their refer their referral reward as well if you want to. Now once you fill out all those details, just click on save at the top right and you should be able to add your referral program into your Wix website. How to copy a page to another site on Wix. In this case, how do we copy a page to another site on Wix? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So in this case, I'm already in my editor here. So if you haven't visited your editor first, go ahead and open up your Wix admin. Go ahead and uh, click on edit or the edit button at the top right of your screen. Now, in your editor, what we need to do is we need to go to the left panel here and you want to access the pages and menu section. Now from here, look for the page that you want to actually want to copy for example i want to copy the about page here let's go ahead and right click on it and choose the copy option here now once you've done that we now need to go to our site here go to your da dashboard again and it should open up a new tab here now once you've done that well now in this case we now need to switch over to a different actual uh, actual website so for example i want to use this specific website here for drop shipping let's go ahead and select this one now, in this case, what we need to do next is we need to again access the pages section. Let's go and click on edit site at the top right again. And from here, we just need to wait for it to load up. But once it's loaded up, again, like what I mentioned before, you need to access the pages section. Now, at the left panel here, go ahead and click on pages and menu again. Go ahead and click on it. And from here, what we need to do is we just need to right click on this one and you have two options. So you have the paste option here, which in this case, this will actually only paste the actual page or you could choose the paste and apply site team. So depending on the team that your website is using, the, the uh, page that we just copied will use that same team. So for example, let's go and click on paste and apply site team here. And as you can see, we now have the copy of about here which in this case, you can go ahead and start editing them if you want to. So in this case, just to give you an idea, so this is the about page that we just copied. And if you want to go to other pages, you can go ahead and do that as well. As you can see right now, we can go ahead and start switching other pages if you want to. How to download Wix website files. So in this case, what we need to do first is we need to access our Wix account. So go to Wix.com, log in into your account, and you should be able to see the sites section here. So in this case, we need to first access our website here. So I actually have this website here that I have. So let's go and click on select and edit site. And once you've done that, you should be able to see your dashboard here or your manage web page for your that specific website. Now in this case, click on the edit site at the top right and that should actually boot up your editor here. And what's, uh, when your editor is actually boot up, what we need to do next is we want to basically access the actual website. Now to do that, at the top right of your screen, in here, you should be able to see a publish button. So whenever you actually hover over it, you should see a specific section here that says view site. 
So in this case, once you click on it, you should be able to see your website here. Now in this case, I first have to explain a few things before we actually download our website files here. Now with how Wix uh, websites are actually currently set up, they don't give you necessary ways to directly download your files from their website. Because again, they use a lot of JavaScript here and a lot of the code or uh, files that is dependent on the Wix servers. So if you want to like, um, like for example, make a local file for that specific website, well, it might not be complete. But still, if you want to download your website files here, there's actually one thing that you could do here. So first thing that we need to do, again, we need to access our actual website here. And from here, what we need to do is we need to right click on any section here until you see the pop up here that says save as. Again, right click on any blank section here, choose save as. And as you can see, it is now being saved as an HTML file. Now in this case, go ahead and rename the file as is, or if you, you could go ahead and just retain it in here and just click on save. Now the download process would actually depend on how your how big your website here. Uh, now in this case, once you've downloaded the file, you could go ahead and click on open that or open file location here. And as you can see, we do have two files here, one HTML and one folder. Now it's really important that you don't download or basically, don't, sorry, don't erase. So make sure that you don't delete the folder that you see in here. Cause this folder actually contains the CSS, the some of the images that you have and some files that is dependent on the HTML file that we saw before. But if you want to view the, your website here now in HTML, you can go ahead and click on it. And as you can see, it's going to open up our website here. And as you can see, it might not be complete. And sometimes the load up process here might take a while. So in this case, you just need to wait for it to fully load up. Again, like what I told you before, the uh, whole thing might not be complete here. Some aspects into your website might, might be missing. Like for example, if you have any plugins installed into your website, they might not appear in your HTML file here, which is something really unfortunate. But again, if you just want to get the skeletal structure of your website, you could just basically do the thing that I just showed you. By the way, if you want to start editing your HTML file here, you could go ahead and just right click on it, click on open with and choose notepad here and you should be able to see the HTML file here. So you could go ahead and do appropriate changes in here and you should be able to see it uh, applied on your website here. So in this case, that's how you actually download your Wix website files. But again, it might not be a complete download, but still, if you just want to get your skeletal structure or some of the basic files that you have for your website, this is how you actually do it. How to duplicate a site on Wix. In this case, how do we duplicate a site on Wix? Well, it's actually pretty easy and there's two ways that you could use to duplicate your site. So the first method is via the actual editor. So in this case, I'm already in my website and I'm in my editor here. So what we need to do is we need to access a very specific section here, which is going to be the uh, site section here at the top set, the top left of your screen. So whenever you click on it, you have the option to publish, save and whatnot. But the most important one is going to be duplicate site. So whenever you click on it, it should open up a new window, which in this case, you just need to name it. Now, in this case, it's uh, going to uh, redirect you here. So it should show you the duplicate site option here, which in this case, you can indicate the name for that site. So you could go ahead and add a name here. Make sure that it, no it does not overlap with any names that you have right now or existing right now on your site. Let's go and click on duplicate here, and that should duplicate our website. Now from here, it should be now a different website from what you had before, and you could go and start editing it in whatever way you want. Now that's the first method. Now the second method is via your account or the, ma the manage.wix.com website here or your accounts. So in this case, they will contain, this will actually contain all your websites. So in this case, what you need to do is you need to look for the website they want to copy. So for example, I have a website here for travel agency. In this case, you should see the button here that says site action. So you could go and click on it and choose the duplicate site option. Now, same thing, you need to add a name for it. Just click on duplicate and that should start duplicating the website itself. And once these duplications are complete here, you could go ahead and just select on it and start editing the website as you would. 
So yeah, so duplicating a, duplicating a website here is pretty easy and a pretty simple process here. So if you don't see it immediately here, you might need to reload your um, account here and it should now pop up in here. But in this case, that's about it. How to put password on Wix website. In this case, how do we add a password or put a password on our Wix website? Well, the first thing we need to do here is we need to access our Wix dashboard. Now from our dashboard, you want to go to your site editor. So go ahead and click on edit site at the top right of the screen on the home page here. Now, in this case, once in your website, what we need to do is we first need to discuss what are the ways to adding passwords into our website. So the first method is via your settings. So from your editor, go ahead and click on settings at the top left. And from here, look for a site password. Go ahead and click on it. Now, in this case, you have two options who can access this site. So either everyone or password holders. In this case, you could add the actual password you want to, that you want to use for your website. So for example, you could go ahead and just type in whatever password here. And once you've added your password, go ahead and click on save and your website is now password protected. As you can see, only visitors with a password can access this site. So if you choose this option. Now, if you only want to actually uh, protect a specific page, you can do this via your pages. So let's go and choose the pages and menu option. From here, look for the page that you want to protect. So for example, I have the about page here. Let's go and click on the three dot icon, choose settings. And from under settings, you want to go to permissions. Under permissions, you want to choose either password holders or members only. So if you choose members only, only the people that is member of your website can actually this page. And if you choose password holders, again, you just need to provide the password they want to use and they should and they should no longer be able to access this specific page without a password. How to convert Wix website to HTML. So let's get started. So how do we actually convert our Wix website into HTML? Well, this one can be kind of complicated because Wix by by default does not provide you a way to basically download your HTML here because Wix actually contains a lot of JavaScript, meaning that their sources or their files or their design is actually dependent on the Wix website itself. So if you're going to download your website from Wix as a standalone HTML, this can be proven really really hard because again some some of the designs or most of the designs that they have in here is actually dependent on the wix servers themselves but uh, in just in case you want to basically just copy the uh, uh, format the framing or how your website actually looks like well this one can be something really helpful because you could actually do this on any browser that you have now in this case, what we need to do first is we need to go to Wix.com, log in into our account, and access the website that you want to basically download the HTML for. So what we need to do here is I already have a website here. So let's go ahead and click on select and edit site here. And that should open up the dashboard section or our manage page here. Now what we need to do next is we need to go to our edit site at the top right here and actually open up your editor. So in this case, this might take a few uh, seconds or a few uh, while here before it actually loads up. So let's just wait for it and that should be able to load itself up. So in this case, let's just wait for it. Now in this case, once it's actually loaded up, what we need to do next is we need to access the actual website or our actual website for Wix. Now at the top right, you should see the publish section. Just hover over it and choose the option that says view site. And that should open up your site here. So what we need to do here is we want to start downloading our website. So what we need to do here is we just need to basically right click on your website here and you could go ahead and basically choose the option here that says save as. So if you don't see it in here, uh, just right click on another section here until you see it. So let's just choose save as here. And once you've done that, it should actually pop up this section here. So in this case, it's going to say the following file names here dot HTML. So the save type is going to be HTM or dot HTML here. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on save here. And it's going to start the download process. Now the download itself may be uh, kind of long depending on how you actually set up your website. Again, I just give you, I just have to give you warning. Some of the features uh, or 
all of the features or most of the features that I have on Wix websites is going to be dependent on the Wix server. So meaning some of the elements or some of the contents that you have here or that you have on your website may be missing if you actually download the HTML file. Now in this case, what we need to do is we need to locate where we actually downloaded our file. As you can see, I actually have two files that we have here. So I'm just going to remove some of the files that is not ready. As you can see, we both have a folder section here as well an HTML file here. So when you visit the folder uh, section here, this will actually contain the images and some of the assets for your website. So that includes the CSS file here and some of the JavaScript that we have here and a lot more. Now, it's very important that you don't erase this specific folder here because this HTML file here is actually referencing this folder here to retrieve some information on it. Now, in this case, what we need to do is we need to open this up so you could go ahead and just double click on it again and actually open up your website here. Again, like what I've told you before, some of the elements that you got or you have on your website might not be present in this section here. But in this case, since you already have the HTML file, you can go ahead and just do the appropriate ways for you to start editing your HTML. Now, in this case, like for example, if you don't know or you don't have an IDE yet, you can actually edit your website here via your notepad. So if you click on open with, choose notepad here, again, you should be able to see the HTML code in here. But if you have a specific IDE, like for example, if you have Sublime, which is a great tool for uh, editing websites or any other IDE that you want to use, you can basically start using it. Now, in this case, there is a great way for you to get your wireframe here or just basically view your uh, code here for your project in Wix. Now, another thing that you could actually do here for your website is to uh, basically just right click. Like for example, you just want to view the HTML files for your website. So what we need to do is or click on it and you just need to click on inspect. And from here, you should be able to see the elements, which is the HTML here. So the console on what is actually happening in here. Now, if you want to view your CSS, it's going to be at the right side here, which is the style section. So yeah, so if you want to reference something or view some uh, certain aspects at your website, just uh, choosing the inspect option here can be a great thing. But again, like what I've shown you, you could actually download it. But again, I just have to warn you, especially if you're using a type of uh, tools or plugins into your Wix website here, they might not appear on the downloaded HTML file. How to convert Wix website to WordPress. So what we need to do first here is we first have to access the two websites or the two platforms that we have. So currently I have my Wix website open up here. So in this case, go ahead and go to Wix.com, open up your website here and basically go to the editor for your website here because we'll be needing a link from our website. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to also open up your WordPress account here. And from here, what we need to do is we need to access a specific setting. So by default, you should be redirected to the My Homepage here. And at the very bottom, you should be able to see different settings here. So we have the tools and settings here. So go ahead and click on tools. Now under tools, you need to click on import. And as you can see, you have the option to basically import content from different sources. Now, just to give you some information, while both Wix and WordPress are both platforms for building your website, the processes and the actual setup for those uh, platforms are actually quite different. So meaning a complete or an actual move or basically a uh, move of your website here. So for example, if you want to ex an exact replica of your website from Wix to your WordPress here, and uh, I would actually just say that it is not possible. So currently with how Wix and uh, WordPress is actually set up, an actual uh, look or an actual, actual replica will not be possible. But the great thing about these two tools here is they still provide a way for you to import or transfer your content and some certain aspects on it. Now, in this case, you should be able to transfer like posts or different uh, settings or different things from your website here. Now, what we need to do here to get started is we need to choose the option here that says Wix. So once you click on it, it's going to ask you for the URL for your Wix site. 
So in this case, go back into Wix here. So make sure that you're in the editor. And from here, under Publish, you should be able to see the View Site section here. And from here, just copy your website. And from here, what we need to do is go back into our WordPress here. Just paste the following. And from here, click on Continue. Now from here on, what we need to do is just wait for it to actually load up. But if it actually requires you uh, further details on it, like for example, is this your site? So it's going to give you the actual uh, link on it and it's going to uh, basically give you a, a quick look on your specific web page here. So another thing that you should consider here is you need to basically make sure that your website is actually published. Now, meaning if your site is not published yet, it might have or uh, basically give you some uh, errors on the website itself. So meaning make sure that it's actually published first. Once it's published, uh, you should not have any problems. Now, in this case, once you've confirmed your site here, you can go ahead and click on yes, start import. And it's going to start importing your posts, your pages and any media. So that includes videos and photos that you have from your Wix website. Now, in this case, so this is how you actually import your data from your Wix website into your WordPress. So again, it more, while it's not possible for us to directly create a replica of our Wix website into WordPress, but it's still possible for us to import or transfer our details. So that includes pages, posts, media, and other details from our Wix website into our WordPress website. And that's about it. So in this case, just wait for it to finish importing and you should be good. How to download Wix website as PDF. So what we need to do first here is we first have to access our account. So go to Wix.com, log in into your account and access the website that you want to download the PDF for. Now in this case, I already have this website here. So let's just go to the homepage here and click on edit side. And that should actually open up your editor for your website. Now, once you've done that, once the editor actually loads up, at the top right of your screen, you should see a publish button. So when you actually hover over it, it's going to show you an option that says view site. Now, in this case, let's just do that and just click on view site here. And from here, that would actually load up your website here. Now, what we need to do next is we need to download our website here. Now, to do that, what we need to do is scroll down a bit here and make sure that you have an empty space here. Now, I have an empty space here for art. Now, what we need to do next is we just need to right click on it and choose the option here that says print. Now, by the way, using the print option here is a great way for you to save uh, time on actually uh, getting your website here. So instead of manually uh, crop cropping your page here or taking a screenshot on the specific page here and basically putting it in a document uh, actually saves you some time. So you don't have to do this manually. Now, in this case, you should be able to start previewing your website here. So what I like to do here or try doing here, I just actually make sure that I actually click on the pages section here, click on all, and the layout is actually going to be landscape. Now, if you choose portrait here, it might not be shown correctly. As you can see, some sections of it is actually crop, cropped out, I mean, but that's why I want to use landscape in here. Now from here, as you can see, it's a lot more viewable here, all of the contents I have. Also, if you click on more settings here, you also have the option to basically add headers and footers. And I also like to add a background graphics here. So I have my background images also included in my PDF file here. Now, in this case, you can also change the scale here. So default or custom margins can be default, none or minimum custom here. And a page per sheet here is going to be one. Now, letter or paper size here is going to be letter by default. It can, you can change that if you want to as well. Now, once you're done, you can just click on save here. And from here, you can go ahead and just add a name for your PDF file here. You can go ahead and just click on save here. Now, once you've done that, that should be able to uh, be able to save that specific file here. So once we go back into that folder, as you can see, I actually downloaded or saved this in my downloads folder. So whenever we actually open it up, it should actually show us our website here. But again, uh, the download process or conversion of your website here to PDF might not be as complete or as uh, perfect. As you can see, some elements of it is missing. So in this case, it, the actual look of your website here actually, actually depends on the team and how you actually set up your website here. 
So for certain aspects on it, you might need to basically crop certain uh, areas on it so that it's going to be properly shown. But in this case, that's how you actually download your Wix website to as PDF. How to transfer Wix website to client. In this case, how do we transfer ownership on our Wix website? Well, the first thing you need to do here is you need to go to your admin page. Now from here, access settings at the left uh, bottom here of your site panel. And from here, look for the option that says roles and permission. Go ahead and click on it. Now, what we need to do is we need to look for the current owner, which is our name right now. So let's go ahead and click on change owner. And from here, we need to enter the other email address that you want to invite and become the owner for this one. So for example, I'm going to invite my other email here. And from here, let's go ahead and choose a few things. So what would you describe them as? So for example, you want to indicate that they're a client, agency, or freelancer, or someone else. Let's go and click on continue. Now, you have an option here to keep you your role as a co-owner for this site after the transfer and as well as create a copy of this site and keep it in your account if you want to. So, for example, I'm going to actually uh, keep my role as a co-owner here and click on continue. Now, in this case, this will actually send an invite to that specific co-owner or that specific user. So, in this case, you'll remain a co-owner for the site after transfer. So, in this case, you need to also confirm that you understand when you transfer your site. The following interest will be transfer. Uh, the following interest will be the new owner. So, if you understand that, click on transfer ownership. That's going to say transfer invite sent. So, what we need to do next is we just need to wait for the client to receive it. Now, in this case, this is the other email that I actually invited. So, typically, they will receive this email here. And what you need to do is, or what they need to do is they just need to click on accept transfer here. And from here, it's going to actually accept that. And they just need to log in into their account. So, I'm going to log in via my Google account here to make things a lot faster. But in this case, once they are logged in, they should be able to accept the actual invitation. So you can see it's now loading the dashboard and that should actually say is uh, actually said transfer success. So in this case, uh, as you can see, when we go to our Wix website here, we should now be able to see the website that was transferred to us. So yeah, so in this case, we now have this website here, as you can see right now. now from here, let's go and go back in here, click on got it. From here, let's just wait for it to reload, and we should now be able to see the updated list of users. So as you can see, client is now the uh, current owner for this one. As you can see, there are they are now the owner. But in this case, you are still a co-owner here since we actually added or used the uh, keep yourself as a co-owner. How to publish Wix website on Google. So you might be wondering, how do you actually publish a website into Google? Well, there are actually multiple ways to publish it. And in this case, we first have to create our website. Now, typically at the top right of your screen, just click on create new site here. And from here, what we need to do is we need to basically start building our website. In this case, you could go ahead and start using AI here to set up your website. But in this case, I won't be using that. And for example, I want to open up an online store here. And from here, just click on continue. Now, depending on what you select on the very first section here, the options that you'll be seeing here would actually change. Now, in this case, what we need to do is we need to set up our store here. So in this case, you could go ahead and click on the option, start setting up your store here, click on continue. It's going to give you some uh, options here. So in this case, no, I'm just starting out. So I'm going to go, I want to go ahead and answer that. Very, what kind of products are you selling? So maybe I want to say this is going to be uh, digital products only. Hit on continue. And from here, we want how are you offering the product so online store would be good click on continue sales channel is you can just go to your dashboard here in this case for us to start designing our website what we need to do is we just need to choose the option here that says design site so at the top right here let's go ahead and click on it and from here what we need to do is we need to create our site so you could basically start from a builder here so you could basically build it from scratch or choose a template for you to start using for your website. In this case, I'll be using a template. Now in this case, maybe I wanna say, I wanna use this template here. Let's go ahead and click on the edit option here. And once we've done that, we could go ahead and just start adjusting all the details that we want to edit here. Now for example, if you want to upload, upload your logo, start adding your items or change a few things on the pages that you have here, you could just go ahead and start editing them. Now in this case, this might take a while for them to actually load up the already site here. So let's just wait for it. So typically it might take a few seconds. So let's just wait for it. 
Now, once it loads up, as you can see, we now have our website. Now, in this case, what you need to do is you can go ahead and start adding elements on it. And for example, if you want to add sections, pages, or site set, uh, designs here, if you want to visit different uh, pages for your website, you can go ahead and click on the page section here and choose the appropriate appropriate site for your but yeah, in this case, you could go ahead and just start editing your website, access any of the site menus here, pages that you want to edit. But in this case, once you've done that, we are now ready to publish it by clicking on the publish at the top right of your screen and using your domain here or just basically just click on save and continue to publish your website. And once you've done that, we are now ready to edit some settings or our SEO for us to publish our Wix website to Google. In this case, you could go ahead and click on the Wix logo at the top left for you to see the uh, dashboard for your website. Now, typically what we need to do is we need to access our marketing since SEO is actually related to marketing. In this case, go ahead and click on the marketing option at the left panel here. And from here, we'll be redirected into the marketing home. Now, as you can see, there's going to be a bunch of things that we should be doing first. Like for example, completing the SEO setup checklist here. In this case, go, go ahead and click on go to SEO and you should be able to see the SEO homepage in here. In this case, just click on get started and from here, you just need to complete all the required details for you to complete your SEO. Now, in this case, once you've done that, you should be able to uh, start using SEO here. As you can see right now, there's going to be a few things here. Like for example, we have the site performance on Google. So this, going to be, this will be using Google Analytics. So in this case, just click on connect to Google. And from here, just again, just complete the SEO checklist for you to start using it. Now in this case, go ahead and click on connect to Google site here. And from here, you just need to uh, go to your site here. So go to the editor, publish your site with the latest SEO updates and come back here to connect your Google. Now, again, once you've done that, you're now ready to access other things here in marketing. So for example, in the marketing tab here, we also have the Google business profile here. So this is a great way for you to publish your business. So if you have a physical store that you are using, it is a great idea to publish this via Google. So in this case, just click on set up profile here and follow the steps for you to uh, basically uh, publish this into Google. In this case, just click on start now here. But in this case, you need to have a domain for you to actually use this feature here in Wix. Now, in this case, what are the other things that we could access here in uh, uh, marketing? For in this case, we also have the Google Analytics here. So in this case, just click on connect Google Analytics and you should be able to see the website for Google Analytics here. But in this case, for you to start using it, you need to have a premium plan for Wix for you to start using it. But once you have that, you have the option to add a Google Analytics ID. Now, in this case, also in the marketing, there is an option for you to access other settings. Like for example, we have the Google Ads here. Now, Google Ads is a great way for you to promote your business. Now, for example, we want to advertise our site page here. Just click on advertise site page. And from here, you need to complete or make sure they have the following. Like for example, you have an upgraded site. So meaning you have a premium plan for Wix as well as a custom domain for your website for you to start using or for you to advertise on Google. Now, in this case, once you've completed all the details here, you should be able to start advertising on Google. Just in this case, just follow the steps that you be, you'll be seeing on your screen. But in this case, those are the different ways for you to actually publish your Wix, Wix website into Google. And that's about it. How to edit Wix website after publishing. So what we need to do first here is we need to access our Wix account. So go to Wix.com, log in into your account, and access your website. Now, as you can see, I am now inside my website's admin page. So what we need to do here is we need to go to either pages here. So you can go to the setup page here or in the home page here. But in this case, what's important is you need to have the edit side option. So let's go ahead and click on it. Now in here, what we need to do next is we just need to start editing our Wix website again. So the editor itself might take some time to load up. So let's just wait for it a bit, but it's, if it's actually loaded up, you should be able to start adding whatever in here. Now, just to give you an idea, so I'm going to hover over my publish here and you should see the option that says view site. So currently, this is what my site currently looks like. As you can see, it's actually quite simple. I haven't added anything in here yet. So what we need to do is we want to add a sample uh, element here. So for example, I'm going to add a heading here. Just add it in here in the center. 
so I'm not going to change much in here so for example this is the example I'm going to show you so in this case once you've added all the changes that you have for your website of or if you've added all the images that you want what you need to do next is just click on the publish at the top right of your screen and that should actually republish your website now again when we go back into our website here and when we reload our website that should actually contain our latest updates as you can see right now i now have the heading one published on my website you have to cancel wix subscription so what we need to do first is we need to go to our account or our account or our website here for wix so go to wix.com log in into your account and once in here what we need to do next is we just need to access our account so the top right you should see your profile icon so let's go ahead and click on it and from here you want to choose the account settings option here now once you've done that at the left side you should see the following options here so you have domains business email vouchers billing history but you also have the section here that says premium subscriptions so let's go ahead and click on it now in this case if you have a premium subscription on your account this is where you'll be able to see them now if you do have one you could just basically click on cancel plan or cancel subscription here and that would actually disable or remove your premium subscription in wix so this one is actually pretty simple and a very very fast one we just need to access the correct windows and you should be good and that's about it how to delete a wix website so how do we actually delete our wix website so what we need to do first is we need to access our account in Wix. So go to Wix.com and log in into your account. Now, by the way, if you're already accessing a website here, like just to give an example, I'm going to go to my website here. So in this case, this is what's going to look like in your dashboard here. But what we need to do here is we need to go back to the main uh, UI that we saw first when we actually log in. So to go back there really easily, just click on the Wix logo at the top left. And that should actually redirect you back to the account page here or the websites that you have. Now for you to delete a Wix website here, what we need to do is we need to locate that website. As you can see, I have four websites here and I want to delete the first one that I have right now. So in this case, instead of clicking select and edit site, you need to click on the tree dotted icon here, which is the site actions icon. So once you click on it, you have the following options and you have also have the option here to move to trash. In this case, go ahead and click on it. And from here, it's going to ask you if you really want to move this to trash. So you have 90 days on this specific website and the trash icon. So when 90 days is up, this uh, type of website or this website will actually be permanently deleted. So in this case, just click on move to trash. And from here, that should be removed and now in our trash. Now, if you want to recover a website, you could go ahead and click on your trash can icon. And from here, you could go ahead and click on the site actions icon here and just click on restore site if you change your mind. But that's about it. So if you found this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe button and watch our next video.